Uh, first of all, thank you to uh, Dean Boat for inviting me. Uh, Dean was my teacher in Bio 1 way, way back when. So uh, the title of the presentation is uh, Presenting Like You Mean It. How to Present an Effective Oral Presentation. Um, I was talking with uh, Dr. Serrano a while ago. I asked her, how many times do you meet face to face? And she said, zero times. <laughs> So you're purely online, I understand. So that's uh, practically the entire, uh, your entire stay in OU, you'll be doing your work online. But like what uh, Mam Joan said, you'll be presenting your papers when you go, uh, when you attend conferences. And I understand your professors will also encourage you to present your papers, diba? Right? Um, looking at the program this morning, if you notice, it's very, st it's structured in a very logical way. So uh, Sir J. Best started talking about how you can be uh, an effective ODA learner. And for you to be able to write your academic paper, you have to be a good student, right? But we also have a saying that research not communicated is uh, research not done. And you have to be able to present your papers. So you'll be writing a lot because that's what you do in uh, open distance education. Uh, but you have to present your paper because the world needs to know, or at least uh, concerned people know, need to know about your work. And the thing is, PowerPoint, question, I have a question for you. Are you still amazed by PowerPoint? Honestly, are you still amazed? Kapag yung teacher niyo recall when you uh, recall the last time that you attended uh, a session like this. Wag naman ngayon uh, a session like this. Na may PowerPoint presentation yung resource person. So were you amazed? Were you enthralled by the by what you saw in the projection screen? Oh, wow, what's that? Yes or no? Na amazed mo ba kayo sa PowerPoint? So, mi mixed answers, but here we have no. Ma matanong ko lang kayo, bago kayo sumubo ulit. Bakit po no? Kasi, uh, seeing PowerPoint presentations feels like it's yesterday already. Feels like it's yesterday already. More like year 2000, yeah. di ba? Uh, more like a decade ago, hindi lang yesterday. It might have been um, interesting in year 2000 dahil hindi pa sikat ang PowerPoint noon. Uh, when I was a student, mas... Uh, para may balance ng paggamit ng overhead transparency. Standan nyo pa yun? Overhead projector. <laughs> but now we have PowerPoint. And unfortunately, um, PowerPoint has made us very lazy presenters. Tama ba? PowerPoint has made us very lazy presenters. Whereas our teachers, siguro, when we were uh, students, or at least yung mga generation ko, kita mo talaga yung effort na binibigay ng teacher pagdating sa overhead transparencies. Dahil medyo mahirap at magasa, di ba, sir? Gumawa ng overhead transparencies. So, i talagang uh, ide-design mo siya in such a way na mare-reuse mo siya, tapos ipiprint mo pa siya sa labas, sa uh, photocopy, or you could uh, print it sa printer mo so long as you had that expensive acetate paper. But PowerPoint has made us very lazy, and like what our participants said, hindi na siya ka interesting. So this is something that we have to keep in mind when, when presenting, and more often than not, we have a PowerPoint presentation with us when we present, tama ba? So, kumbaga ngayon, novel na, na dadating ka sa isang session without any slideshow compared with a person who comes to a session with a PowerPoint presentation. So in the short talk, uh, it is my hope that you would be able to discuss the steps in planning a presentation. So guess what? Ang presentation pala ay pinaplan. Kalain nyo yun? <laughs> hindi, siya, hindi ka diretsong sasabak sa, sa software. Principles in designing a presentation. So uh, we won't be doing any hands-on work. Uh, I handled a session on this last June among some of the um, technical staff of the Bureau of Fisheries and Aqu Aquatic Resources of the Department of Agriculture. So it was a two-day workshop. So don't may hands-on talaga sila. Gumawa sila ng presentation and then afterwards they present sila sa last day. But you won't be, we won't be doing that here because uh, we're pressed for time. And tips in delivering a presentation. Okay? So have you ever watched a TED Talk? Are you familiar with TED? I think most of you would be familiar with TED because uh, you're Odell learners. Um, how long is a TED talk on the average? May mga TED talks na talaga naka specifically label na 
talks less than five minutes, di ba? If you're pressed for time, gusto mo lang coffee break, you can watch that talk. But on the average, talks are 17 to 20 minutes. And these speakers are very good because they are able to communicate uh, everything they need in such a way na kaya ng time limit na 17 to 20 minutes. So it's very economical the way they package and they, the way they present their, uh, their content. So if they can do that, so can we. And if you notice the PowerPoint presentations that uh, TED speakers use, well, some of them don't use PowerPoint presentations at all, but, but those who do uh, make use of very efficient slides, hindi ka magbabasa, titingin ka lang. So to set the stage for this presentation, uh, I'll begin with this quote. This is from um, the book Slideology. I'll show you my references, but for now you can write that down. The, uh, the title of the book is Slideology. The author is uh, Duarte. Uh, she said, don't commit career suicide. <laughs> Ibig sabihin ay, a lot of um, careers, professional careers, your academic careers, rep uh, depend on effective oral presentations. And you don't want your presentation to be the death of you. Tama ba? So people are very visual-minded. We are very visual-minded. And talking about today's uh, X, tama ba? No, I generation. I gen na nga pala ngayon. X gen, matagal na yon. I gen. The I generation has a very, very short attention span. Okay, a very, very short attention span. And aside from that, uh, the I generation is also very visual minded, visually minded rather. So make sure that when you create your uh, slideshow, that you don't allow your participants to read everything sa slide. You don't want to commit career suicide. So you have to use the, the right tool the right way. So the first question you have to ask is, gaya nga nung sabi ni Dr. Libero kanina, if, uh, if, you, if there's nothing worth communicating, then don't communicate at all. Diba? Don't communicate that at all. In the same way, ask yourself first, kailangan ko ba ng ganito? Do I need a slideshow? Do I need a PowerPoint presentation? So that's the first thing that you have to ask. In a setting like this, mga 50 ata kayo ngayon, we might need a presentation dahil yung mga nasa likod, kailangan makita yung nandito. But if we're, uh, if we're holding a small meeting among, let's say, 7 to 10 um, members, baka hindi natin kailangan ng ganito. Uh, everyone might be better off holding a handout or looking at a handout habang nagdi-discuss yung nag-set nag ng meeting. Hindi ba? So we don't need PowerPoint all the time. Let's set that uh, straight first. We don't need PowerPoint all the time. In other words, this is not the independent variable. You are. Okay, you are the independent variable. This is a supplement. This reinforces the message that you want to communicate with your listeners, with your audience. Okay, so that's the first thing that uh, Duarte says in her book. More often than not, presentations, or uh, at least in residential classes, um, and having been a student for most of my life, um, papansin namin na ang mga presentations ay, ng teachers ay puro text. Kinopia ang textbook at ginawang PowerPoint presentation. The thing is, it's become so common, right? That we don't even think it's wrong anymore. And because we see it, we also do it. But this reference tells us that there's a better way of uh, presenting. And this is not how to do it. This is one way of how you shouldn't do it, or what you see here. This is a document. Ko ilalagay, uh, sabi ng author, ko ilalagay mo lahat sa PowerPoint presentation, bakit hindi mo na lang ilay out sa Microsoft Word, photocopy mo, bigay mo sa participants, do without this. Kasi kung babasahin lang nila dito, why not let them read it then sa handout? Tama po ba? So, this is again a supplement. It's supposed to support your message, but this is not the message, okay? So, this is uh, the first type. The second type is when you, uh, hindi lahat naman nasa PowerPoint, pero tingin ka ng tingin pa rin. Pinabasa mo pa rin siya bullet per bullet. This is what you call, what do news uh, anchors do? Ano yung ng mga news anchors pag nagbabasa sila? Teleprompter, di ba? So parang teleprompter. And I'm sure you've had teachers din siguro in the past sa residential courses na tingin na tingin sa, sa projection screen. 
in fact, uh, if you have to understand the layout of the room, uh, it would be better siguro kung dito ako nakatayo, doon sa side na yon. Tapos si projection screen ay nasa kaliwa ko. Pero mas marami yung rows dito. Because the eye moves from left to right. And what's happening now is you're looking at me and you're looking from right to left. So medyo contradictory siya sa logic ng ating otak. So siguro uh, it would be better kung kayo yung, kapag mag present kayo, study the room first. If that doesn't allow you to do what uh, logic tells you to do, then you have to adapt. You have to adapt to your surroundings. But some projection screens are behind the speaker, di ba? Some projection screens are behind the speaker. And you don't want to do this. Okay, number one. <laughs> Babasahin mo lahat na nasa likod mo because you should never face the wall. You should always face your audience. So the ideal situation is when you come up with a presentation. Diba? So yung ecology, na, yung uh, process natin ay come up with a document, a handout, siguro supplement yun sa uh, audience. But this is what we're talking about, a presentation. Ang document, mga 75 words per slide. Ang teleprompter, you put around 50 words. Sa presentation, minsan wala pang text at all. Photos lang. Because you are the one telling the audience what the message is. The idea is, um, how many times na ba tayo na umaten na isang session, and then after magsalita ng speaker, may mga hawak ng flash disk. Nakapila na, hihingi po ng presentation. Okay? I think we always do that because we want to get the present the contents right that's actually a sign that you didn't create a presentation but you created a document or perhaps teleprompter style yung ginawa mo the really great presentations ay pag tiningnan mo yung slideshow niya wala kang maiintindihan a contextual siya kailangan niya ng speaker na magpapaliwanag nung nasa loob ng slides and kapag walang pumila sa yo at humingi ng presentation, ibig sabihin, maganda yung delivery mo. Or, wala sila nakuha. <laughs> Pero sana maganda delivery mo. And you can give them a handout siguro, di ba? So, we're talking about presentations, not documents or not uh, teleprompters. And very quickly, uh, in DevCom, we, by the way, this is also something that I, um, that I share with my DevCom 199 students that's an uh, undergraduate seminar in DevCom. This is where they present their thesis. So uh, I share with them this presentation first. So presentation media are different from written media, different from online media and social media as well. You have to understand that you're interfacing with a crowd. And the first thing that you have to think about is dalawang channels. Yung gumagana sa room na to, ano kaya yung D na ito? Naglagay ako ng tape, tas pipila, ano to, peel off yung tape para makita niyo yung text. So we're talking about dual channels. Pinapagana niyo yung inyong sense of sight and sense of hearing to make sense of what this presentation is all about. People won't listen to you and read what is in your PowerPoint presentation at the same time. It's either they're reading or they're listening, okay? So again, don't put everything here. Humans are also, or humans also have limited capacity. You can't possibly um, give everything in one go, okay? I was talking with some of my students because they, they, they were telling me, grabi naman si teacher X, 150 slides in one and a half hours. Sabi ko, Paano yung nangyayari? Kasi I think in that session, naka 15 slides lang ako in one hour. And then sabi niya, wala, pindot lang siya ng pindot. So kung ano ma... Sabi ko, paano kayo nakakopya? Sabi niya, kung ano maabutan, yun na lang ang kokopyahin. Okay? But people have limited um, capacity as far as processing information. In fact, the human brain can process only seven chunks of information at a time. Which is not surprising that our telephone numbers are composed of seven digits. Diba? Five, three, six... 8689, for example, or our cell phone numbers, madaling uh, ma memorize yung 091 or 092. Diba? Pag, pag mag, mag memorize tayo ng number, we really pay attention to the last seven digits, not the 09 whatever. Okay? So people have limited capacity. Don't bombard them with information. 
Okay, you have to be as economical as possible. And you must also rely on active processing. So what you make out of a presentation uh, will also depend on your experiences. And it will also depend on how the speaker has uh, related the message to you. So it's a combination of different factors. Okay, so we have to think about how people process information. And there are three steps when we, cre when we create an effective PowerPoint presentation. So we have to plan. That's the first thing that we have to do. Then we design, and then we execute, or we deliver the presentation. So it's not that different from writing a research paper, because we also have to plan proposal, deba. Right? We design our uh, study, our instrument, and then we execute. We uh, do the study itself. But this is the stage that people often uh, skip or gloss over. They don't feel, presenters feel that they don't need to plan anymore. In other words, diretso na sa PowerPoint. Ipopull up na ang PowerPoint or ang keynote sa Mac. That's diretso ng input. But actually, we have to plan. And it's said that when we plan, we have to begin with the blank in mind. Hulaan nyo nga. This means that you have to think about the purpose, the purpose uh, of your talk. Why are you presenting? And you also have to think about what your audience or what your listeners need. So tama po kayo. You have to begin with the end in mind. And this is a useful lesson, not only in presenting, but I think in everything we do in life. When we write a paper, what is it that we want our... Diba we write because we want to be read unless you write for a self-serving purpose, diary yun, okay? But if we write, in the academy, we write because we want to communicate a new idea to a given uh, group of stakeholders. So we have to think about our purpose, and then we write. This is what we, what we mean by uh, beginning with the end in mind. So what do you want your listeners to take home with you? That's how you design, or that's how you plan your presentation. This one is quite difficult because PowerPoint, again, has made us very lazy creatures. We have to plan in Anna Blank mode, as represented by this cassette tape. Diba? Analog mode. Ano ibig sabihin kaya nito? So PowerPoint is a digital medium, but that shouldn't stop us or that shouldn't uh, prevent us from doing our planning in analog mode. Ibig sabihin, um, PowerPoint kasi, ang PowerPoint ay hindi brainstorming tool. It's a tool kung saan mo ilalagay yung iyong contents. Okay? So PowerPoint is good at that. PowerPoint is good at uh, bulleting, animation, colors, text, and so on. But it's not a brainstorming tool. But you have to brainstorm before you design your PowerPoint presentation. So go to your whiteboard. Don't come sketch get a piece of paper, don't come magsulat, and then once you have your ideas written down, you translate those ideas into a slideshow. Tama po ba? You don't go to PowerPoint, you don't boot up PowerPoint right away, tas doon ka na gagawa. You have to think about how you're going to uh, present your material in such a way that would make sense and that in such a way that it would be interesting to your, to your listeners. And more importantly, speaking and connecting with an audience is analog. Of course, you're, this crowd would disagree with me because you are open and distance learners. So you definitely need an uh, internet connection and a computer to speak and connect with other people. But when you present in a forum like this, it's very analog. We are not robots, right? So uh, we have to think about that also. Dr. Libero's uh, session a while ago and also uh, Sir Jabez's session a while ago really exemplify this. You have to think about S's. Ano to? Mababore ang inyong listeners kapag binabasa mo lang yun nandun. And if, you're, if you talk in purely academic terms. So don't forget to inject some stories. Uh, in UPLB, we uh, hold our, most, of our, most of our classes in large class mode. So around 200 yung students namin. It's a challenge to keep everyone alive, alert, awake enthusiastic at 1 p.m. at 2 p.m. lalo. But when you tell a story, and this happens all the time, when you tell a story, their eyes light up 
and they start listening to you. And by story, I mean referring to Jezebel or any telenovela showing, uh, show, currently showing on ABS-CBN or GMA or TV5. So students love stories. And no, well, not just students, but everyone loves stories. So if you can relate a good story to your presentation, you can ensure that you can hook their attention, diba? Right? So stories are easy to remember. Mas naalala natin ng mga kwento kaysa yung actual text uh, presentation. And you have to remember that it's always going to be about, it's not about you. Of course, when you present, you're the star of the show. But again, you begin with the end in mind, diba? Right? So it's all about your, it's all about your audience. It's all about your listeners. It's all about your spectators. What can they take home with them after your talk? So again, you, you present not to uh, fulfill uh, a purpose for just for yourself, but you want to make sure that your audience takes home something with him or with her after your talk. And then you design your slideshow. This, I think, um, when people say, gawa ka ng PowerPoint, this is what, what people really mean. As in, gagawin yung PowerPoint, it is design yung slideshow. But actually, this is the part, the planning part, takes the, takes the longest. Dun sa libro, dun sa reference ko, um, how long does it take to come out to prepare a PowerPoint presentation? Nilagay niya 36 hours. Planning, uh, designing it, and then finally executing it. Strangely enough, yung pinakamaikse yung delivery. Diba? <laughs> Strangely enough, it's the delivery that takes the shortest time, okay? But it's the planning that takes the longest. But once you've planned everything, then you can design now. So, dito yung practical tips natin, okay? But before I begin uh, with this part, mag-share naman kayo sa akin, ano ang sa tingin yung no-nos sa PowerPoint? Based on your experiences, ano mga no-nos? Wordy. Wordy. Ano ang... Kailan nagiging wordy? When it's full of text. You just have to digest everything in one word. Okay, so, sabi ni ma'am, pangalan po, ma'am Joan, text, okay? Her comment has to do with text, wordiness. Any comments or may masashare ba kayo yung no-nos pagdating sa graphics? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I agree with you 100%, but what is good? <laughs> Pag contrasting ay okay, hindi okay. Good or bad? Good. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that in a while. Sir, you were saying? Okay, give me an example of a simple transition. Fade, okay. Anong pinaka-common na transition sa PowerPoint? None. <laughs> if you think about it, none siya. But actually, the, the non-transition is a cut. Cut yung transition niya. Okay? But yeah, fade. Fade is okay. And animation? Anong simple animation? Uh -huh. Bounce, okay. Actually, PowerPoint has a lot of transitions. Luma yung gamit kong PowerPoint uh, uh, sa Microsoft Office. I think the newer one has fancier, more high-tech animations and transitions. The first time I used PowerPoint was in 2001. It changed my life. Because lumaki ako sa Paint. Microsoft MS Paint. Meron ba sa inyo rin lumaki sa Paint? Natuwa sa Paint? Yes? Sobrang nakakatuwa ang Paint nung 90s. Siguro ngayon, uh, hindi na siya ganun nakakatawa. And kids today know how to use Photoshop, but I, Paint has a very special place in my heart. <laughs> and then I discovered PowerPoint. It's like, wow, you can make the text move. So the first presentations I created, 2001, I was a new freshman. Pag nagka-present ako sa class, akala ko ang galing-galing ko dahil yung presentation ko, ang daming effects. May sound effects pa. <laughs> Di ba may sound effects sa uh, PowerPoint? There's a sound effect na applause, di ba? Yung iba nila talaga yung applause na sound effect sa last slide. Para kapag wala pong malakpak, at least may papalakpak sa kanyang uh, presentation. Okay. 
But when you present in a, uh, to a professional crowd, I think I would tend to agree with these uh, two fine fellows. Now, let's use simple transitions, use simple animations. Let's not make it wordy. So, okay, I think we're done. <laughs> uh, the first thing that you have to keep in mind is kiss. It's uh, an acrostic. Again, it's, uh, it's a lesson in life that we can apply not only in uh, presenting, but also when we write, when we talk. Uh, we have to keep it short and simple. If you're on the sarcastic side, you can say, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> but the idea is, you have to present one idea per slide. Kaiba natin yun. The next time we create a PowerPoint presentation, one idea per slide. Let's not load the slide with too many ideas. Yung tipong isang chapter ng book na sa slide na. So one slide per idea. But it also has to do with design. When you keep your design as clean as possible, mas palatable siya sa senses ng inyong listener. So that's the first thing that you have to keep in mind. I use the term design your slideshow rather than prepare your slideshow. Madali mag-prepare ng slideshow. Mahirap mag-design. And unfortunately, ang role ng designer, the term designer, has often been relegated an aesthetic role. Ang tingin natin sa designer ay taga layout, magaling sa kulay, sa typeface, and so on. But actually, designers are problem solvers. And as a presenter, you created your PowerPoint presentation. You should have designed it in such a way that can address, again, what is the end that you have in mind, okay? And how you design your slideshow, you can think about arrangement. We won't discuss everything, but just to give you an idea what we're talking about, arrangement has to do with the spatial layout of the contents. Okay, so contrast, flow, hierarchy, unity, proximity. Visual elements, background, color, text, images, okay, movement, animation, timing, sp uh, pace, distance, and so on. So these three elements, arrangement, visual elements, and movement, make up your presentation as far as the design is concerned. For example, so I'll be uh, showing you some examples from actual PowerPoint presentations. So this is an example that shows you how items can be arranged. Of course, uh, the, the original presentation might have, might have had animation, but I just got this from, from a PDF file, so it's uh, quite static here. So th this is one example of uh, how you can create a slide. But in terms of uh, wordiness and in terms of quantity, quantity po muna tayo. So sabi ni uh, Ms. Joan a while ago, let's not make it too wordy. How many lines should our slide have? Any, any guess? By the way, let's not make this too... Huwag tayo masyado maging stricto, ha? Ibig sabihin, let's not be too uh, bent on following the rules, okay? These are guidelines. So, hindi ibig sabihin na sinasabi natin na maximum of how many young guests? So, eight? Yep. Six, okay? I won't say you have a right or wrong answer. Five lines is okay. Pero let's say that the sign yun na yung slideshow nyo. Ay, six lines! Mali! Wag naman tayong ganun. Let's just use these as recommended um, figures. Pero kung tipong sampu, I think that's stretching it too far. Ibalik natin ng konti sa around five, six. And how many words? Again, dun sa pinakita kong process kanina, a document has uh, more than 75 words. Teleprompter, around 50. So per presentation, how many words should we put in our slide? 20, okay. So our uh, average is around 20 to 25. Again, wag naman yung tipong 26, malina. So this is uh, a good estimate, okay. This would tell you na even the people at the back of the room can still read it, okay. For example, again, if you look at arrangement, so the arrangement here is uh, symmetrical. You have something on the left and then something on the right. So this is uh, the human brain and the two hemispheres. One, two, three, four. Four lines. 
and I'm pretty sure that the number of words doesn't exceed uh, 25. In fact, you don't even have to put text in your PowerPoint presentation. We can graphics. What about typeface? Anong classing font ang gagamitin natin? The recommendation is use a san okay, sans serif font. Uh, sans serif means walang serif. <laughs> serif is uh, Latin for buntot, for tail. So uh, picture Times New Roman. Okay, picture Times New Roman. Look at the letters of Times New Roman. Parang may buntot ng konte, di ba? Connecting each letter with the next. Okay? In PowerPoint, it said that, again, this is not a hard and fast rule, but it might be better to use a sans serif typeface, just like billboards. So, sino po yung galing pampanga today? <laughs> so, dumaan ka sa expressway, ano? Kita mo yung mga billboards. Most of the billboards ay gumagamit ng sans serif. Dahil ang sans serif typeface ay bold. Kita mo agad, nababasa mo agad. So even the people sitting sa back ng room ay mahikita yung text mo kapag siya ay sans serif. But again, this is not preventing you from using a, a serif typeface. Type face, huh? So again, if it's readable, then you're good to go. So some examples here are the, the common ones we usually use, Arial, Tahoma, and th again, it's not a hard and fast rule, but if you intend on sharing your presentation, which kind of contradicts what we said earlier, na, uh, the best presentations aren't shared, but if, you, if, you, if there's something in your presentation that you really want to share with other people, and you want to make sure that you don't yung order, yung format, then it might be best that you use uh, a font face that everyone owns, like these ones. Otherwise, you'll have to uh, provide a copy of the font to your uh, recipient, diba? So that's uh, one drawback done. So this is an example of a sans serif typeface. It's not exactly Arial, but it looks like Arial. Kung mapansin yung strokes, hindi siya exactly Arial. But it's easy to read, okay? Uh, it would be better siguro kung mas malaki siya. Okay, but style siya nung gumawa nung presentation. In terms of the size of the text, again, there's no hard and fast rule, but this is a general guideline. Kasi may kinalaman din siya sa, um, sa eyesight, di ba? So it said that we determine the age of the oldest person in the audience. Sino po kaya dito? <laughs> proud po, no? loud and proud. Let's pretend na ang oldest dito ay 40. So we divide that age by two, so that's 20, and then we use that as our minimum type size, so 20, okay? It gets harder if our audience is composed of um, people with poor eyesight. Hindi nila mahikita ang presentation mo. So you're better off using big fonts. So the recommended sizes, uh, in case you forget this uh, rule, the recommended sizes are 44, around 44 for your, kailan mo gagamitin ng 44? Headings, okay? Headings like uh, yung mga nasa taas. Uh, 38 for your, a little lower than 44, 38 for your subheadings. And the body should not be smaller than 28. So let's make 28 our uh, minimum type size. Of course, this is variable because it depends on the type of font that you choose. May fonts na malaki ang 28, sa iba naman ay malaki na yung 26. So again, we, we, we're not tied to these uh, figures, but we have to keep in mind that the text has to be readable. Kailangan nababasa ng lahat ng tao. Okay? So this is an example of uh, your slide showing one idea and a slide that doesn't have any meaning if the presenter isn't there to discuss the topic. Okay, so I don't know what the speaker intended sa slide na ito, but I'm showing this to you because we don't get it. And that's okay because we need the speaker or we need the presenter to tell us the different tips on achieving balance. 
in terms of the typeface, so this one is pretty okay. Nababasa pa naman natin siya. Yung mga nasa likod, nababasa nyo ba? Okay. This one is a bit smaller. If the room is um, a lecture hall, definitely our projection screen wouldn't be this big. It would be uh, bigger, much bigger than this one. So these are some um, tips on how you can be a good TED speaker. So in enumerate yung lahat ng tips dito. And just to let you know, dun sa succeeding slides, I meron siyang tip per slide ata. But in this slide, all the tips are here. Nagbigay siya ng rundown. So the text is a bit smaller. It's a bit harder to read. Diba? It's a bit harder to read. But this might be within our range na 26 to 28. Okay? So this goes to show you that even if you follow the exact uh, numbers prescribed, ay kailangan mo pa rin siya makita sa isang uh, setting to see if your audience can really read the text. Color. Sabi ng ating participant kanina, let's use good colors. What are good colors? So she said, uh, you may contrast. But there are actually different color combinations that we can choose from. Nahirapan ba kayo pumili ng kulay? In, in daily life or in uh, presentations? <laughs> if you're colorblind, you have an excuse, right? But in presentations, we have a variety of colors to choose from. So let's run them down. Tandaan nyo pa yung color wheel na tinuro sa atin nung tayo ay nasa kindergarten. So let's recall the color wheel. It's a range na parang pizza. Para siyang pizza, Roy G. Biv. Okay? Magkakatabi lang sa paikot lang, Roy G. Biv. So how does a monochromatic color combination look like? Blue, dark blue. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is red. But you have different tints and you have different shades of red okay so if you use a monochromatic color combination it's playing it safe it's conservative diba? it's a very conservative color palette because you're not offering too much uh, contrast okay sino po dito ang monochromatic ngayong araw sir tayo po tayo Okay, so this is a monochromatic color combination. As you can see, we have our model. Uh, <laughs> dark blue. Uh, uh, yung stripes niya ay may light blue, di ba? Denim. Okay, thank you, sir. Palakpakan natin ng ating model. <laughs> so this is a, a monochromatic color combination. Okay. Ano analogos? Kapag sinabi mong analogos, magkatabi sila sa color wheel. Okay, the colors touch uh, each other. Just like blue and green, kasi Roy G. Biv, di ba? Uh, o kaya red and orange, or yellow and green. So, ang ginagawa ng analogous color combination ay, it communicates harmony. Because the green transitions nicely or smoothly to the blue, or the blue transitions smoothly to the indigo. Sino po dito ang analogous today? Blue and green, any models here? Or red and orange? May nakita ko kanina ka green and blue eh. Sige ma'am, and sir, tayo nga kayong dalawa because you're sitting next to each other. So we have here blue. Ayan, mag-spin kayo for everyone to see. Ayan, blue and green. We have our analogous color combination. So you two are harmonious together. Okay. Wait till we see sino yung nagka-complement with each other, di ba? So, kapag magka-tapat, okay, yun yung complementary. If the slices are uh, opposite, just like blue and orange, purple and yellow, and Christmas, red and green. Okay, red and green. Um, the complementary color combination offers the most contrast. Magkalayo, magkalayo sila, di ba? But it offers... a uh, contrast in your presentation, it's not as uh, safe or conservative as your monochromatic color combination. It doesn't necessarily communicate harmony, but it does communicate contrast, okay? Or it does offer contrast. The thing about complementary colors are they're too opposite, so the contrast is very high. 
if you're not that um, adventurous enough when it comes to colors, you can try the split complementary color combination. Um, you take one color, in this case, I think this is violet. Don't get the yellow, na complementary color niya. Take the two colors sa tabi ng yellow. So we have here green, and we have here orange. So this time, tatlo na ang ating kulay. Hindi na siya dalawa na complementary. Okay? Anong difference niya ngayon sa triadic? Dahil pag triad, tatlo, di ba? So tatlong kulay din ang triadic. The difference has to do with the spacing. If you take a look at the split complementary color combination, hindi equal yung spaces among the colors or between two colors, between any two colors in the scheme. In the triadic color combination scheme, they are equally spaced. So, kung iandar mo yung isa sa left, or rather sa right, aandar lahat ng colors sa right. So, pwede rin yan. Theoretically, ang sinasabi ng color combination sa to ay, these are the colors that work together well. But again, we don't have to uh, be too tied to these uh, rules. Tetradic makes use of if you're schizophrenic hindi kayo or indecisive, hindi kayo makapag-decide sa kulay, I want many colors. So tetradic makes use of uh, two sets of complementary colors. The idea is, don't use the colors in equal proportion. So meron kang blue, meron kang green, may red, may orange. You can highlight red. Red is the focal color of your presentation. Blue, green, and orange are the Supporting color. So, sila yung bullet points, kulay ng bullet points, kulay ng words na hina-highlight, but red would be your focal color. Okay? It's useful if you print out uh, the color wheel and then indicate nyo sa tabi ng inyong desk so that when you choose colors, meron kayong handy reference. You can also print out a second copy. Paskil nyo sa closet nyo. Pagbukas yun nung, di ba sa umaga, some people say, what am I going to wear today? <laughs> you look at your color wheel. I'm feeling tetradic today. <laughs> and then you get your, uh, you get your colors. Uh, in case you forget all of these color combinations, which we will, mahirap mag-memorize, mag search nyo lang sa Google. Sabi nga ni Sir Jabez, uh, ask Google everything. Search sa Google, color combinations. The first site that pops up, or at least uh, last night, the first site that popped up, and I use this site a lot, uh, colorcombos.com. Colorcombos.com. Uh, ang, ang choice natin kasi pagdating sa kulay ay ini-inform din ng ating institution, di ba? Or ng ating field. For example, if we work in the agricultural industry, ano yung okay na, kulay, okay na colors na gamitin? Definitely green. I would tend to refer to the Department of Agriculture logo. So I think there's green and uh, DNR pala naisip ko. So DNR may green, may blue, may uh, white, okay? Um, if you need to use blue, what you can do is you go to colorcombos.com. Meron silang selection ng colors. Very specific colors. Hindi lang blue, ha? They have uh, turquoise. They, they ha uh, the, the site has teal. Okay, so you can choose uh, the specific U that you want, and then maga output siya ng mga maga kaaya ayang color combinations. Okay, so this is a monochromatic palette, all blue. Okay, but there are other combinations there. There are uh, there are combinations na may blue, that's may peach. Okay, kala inyo pwede pala silang match. So this site will offer you plenty of color combinations. So this is where we can uh, say na okay lang maging lazy sa, by logging on to colorcombos.com. But I'm not endorsing the site. There are plenty of apps kahit sa cell phones, sa smartphones nyo, that can choose um, nice color combinations to use. So moving on, this is an example of the analogous color combination. Uh, medyo hindi siya halata, siguro gawa nung... Uh, lighting natin, pero dark blue siya against a green background. Here's another example. Again, it's not that apparent here, but this is, or this could be argued as complementary. So again, this is blue, and this is uh, red-orange. 
in fact, the industrial revolution is a, a, a bit yellow. So some people might argue that it's um, tetr uh, triadic. Okay. Whatever possible, let's try to avoid using blank templates. Ano kaya tong M na to? It's not a requirement, but if we can stray from the templates available on PowerPoint, let's try to avoid them. Why? When you present in front, you're, in a way, you're showing uh, your audience who you are. Diba? Uh, and what your branding is. If you want to come across as a unique presenter, then you can try to come up with your own template. Madali namang gumawa ng template sa Microsoft Word. All you have to do is modify the master slide. Diba? If you have extra money, you can buy templates online. Nakakabili rin ng uh, Microsoft, Word, uh, Microsoft PowerPoint templates online. But these templates that you see here, Actually, gumanda na sila over the years compared with Microsoft uh, 2003. Magaganda na yung 2008. Well, 2010 din, magaganda na rin. Uh, unfortunately, these are very common templates that uh, many people have already used. So, nadidiminish yung inyong uniqueness and you want to come across as unique. So, you can come up with your uh, templates just like this one. So, it's a very simple template. Ang, actually, yung template lang niya ay yung linya na blue sa taas. That's scribbly line sa taas. Tapos naglagay lang siya ng um, text box na dynamically napapalitan ng content. Who are you? Title niya yon, And then yung text niya ay ganito. So this is a very simple template which you can uh, create as well. And the template looks like this. Pansin nyo hindi nagbabago yung position ng blue line? Okay, there you go. So it's not a Microsoft template, but it's a, an appealing, simple template that anyone can come up with. But this is seen as a larger crime, especially by graphic designers. When you make use of, what do you call graphic? Na <laughs> Clip art. If this were 1992, this would be Revolutionary. <laughs> Dahil hindi pa uso ang graphics. Di ba? Nung time na yun. Um, but clip art has actually evolved. Kung pupunta ka sa PowerPoint, insert, and then photo, and then clip art, marami na actually hindi na string beans like, uh, like these characters. Okay, so the very 90s ito mga to. But if you can come up with your own sketches, may magaling, may magaling ba mag-drawing dito? Kung magaling kayo mag-drawing and you have a, an iPad, mag-sketch kayo sa iPad, save it as a, an image file, use it sa PowerPoint, you've created your own graphics. Maganda yun. Kailangan nyo lang mag-invest ng oras. Diba? Or you can download um, images from the web. Uh, Creative Commons images are preferable para hindi kayo nag infringe on copyright. Okay? But clip art is said to be a bit cliche already. And we've seen a lot of clip art in our lifetime. So the graphics used here are Hindi clip art, as you will see. But they convey the message, or they support the text here. So the most successful speakers at TED, that is, share these characteristics. Longer hair than average, interesting. Glasses. Nag content analysis siya ng lahat ng presenters at TED.com. And it appears that the most successful speakers wear glasses. So, note to all of us, yung mga naka glasses dito, I think you're on the right track. <laughs> for, for the rest of us, we might need to purchase. Dressed up more than the average TED speaker. So, siguro mas formal ng kaunte. But these are not um, clip art graphics. Let's use high quality graphics. Wag tayo mag stretch ng images. I think you've seen presentations na stretch. Banat, di ba? Either binanat siya horizontally or vertically. Okay? So put the image uh, as is. Or you can crop the image to show what you really need to highlight. But um, it helps. Alam ko mahilig din kayo mag take ng pictures. Iset ninyo yung resolution ng camera ninyo na mataas. Madali kasi mag-downgrade. 
mahirap mag-upgrade. Who knows, yung picture na kinuha na ninyo ay pwede nyo i-enter sa isang photo contest. Na pag nanalo, gagawing malaking billboard. But that can't happen if your photo ay maliit lang yung resolution. Okay? So let's make that a habit then. So that when you, when you, because you're gonna write a paper, right? Nag-research kayo, you'll be taking photos during your data gathering. Make sure that your photos are big enough and are nice enough to be used in a presentation. So high quality graphics are also good. This is an example of a, a graphic turned into a wallpaper. So the presentation is uh, entitled, Seven Good Reasons You Should Travel Solo. So here's another slide from that presentation. So wallpaper or background and treatment niya sa photo. You can also do this. It's a common treatment. Gagawin mo siyang background, a little darker or lighter than usual. Para lilitaw si text, may contrast. So one, you can boost your self-esteem and then a bit of uh, explanation below. Judiciously use animations and slide transitions. Not like this. <laughs> because it takes a long time bago <laughs> lumabas yung message. Isipin nyo kung buong slide ganan. At buong slide show ganan. So this is uh, preferable. Diba? Fade in lang. So some, some animation is good, but let's stick to the most subtle guy ang sabi ni Kuya kanina. And um, if you need to show videos, it would help a lot if you embed your video in PowerPoint. Ilagay niyo na yung video sa PowerPoint mismo. Because it ruins the, the seamlessness of the presentation kapag sasabihin niyo, guys, I have a video to show you, teka lang ha, and then pipindutin mo escape, and then bubuksan mo yung folder. I feel like it's an invasion of uh, the presenter's privacy whenever we take a glimpse sa kanyang folders. Do you feel the same way? <laughs> not, 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 not just for me, but when I see uh, presenters, kita ko yung folders, I feel like I, I'm invading the person's privacy because I'm not supposed to see that. So uh, everything that you want your audience to see, put on PowerPoint. Okay. Of course, there are uh, exceptions. Kanyare SPSS, you want to show how to compute, then of course, by all means, pull up the program. But make sure the program has already been loaded. Hindi yung bubuksan mo palang siya from program, and then pipiliin mo palang siya. So be ready, okay? But videos can be uh, embedded in PowerPoint. So let's do that. And audio as well. If you uh, want your listeners to uh, listen to a podcast, for example, you can uh, embed the audio file there. And the last part is the shortest part in this presentation because like what I told you a while ago, uh, presenting a presentation or delivering a presentation takes the shortest time, diba? Parang pagtitake lang ng picture. Let's go back to uh, film-based photography. Matagal mag-compose ng shot, diba? And then kung naka-tripod ka pa, tapos meron kang paraphernalia like uh, flash o kaya meron kang uh, reflect things reflector, diba? So getting the shot takes a lot of time. Pressing the button, wala pang one second, diba? And then developing the shot takes, the, the photo takes a lot of time. Just like delivering, it takes the shortest time. So you have to make sure that it matters the most. The first tip is, you move away from the podium, okay? Which, uh, Sir Jabez and Sir Lex did a while ago. The podium here is a crutch. It, it's a crutch. Ibig sabihin, nahihiya ako eh. <laughs> Hindi ako alis dito. I'm just gonna stand behind the podium so that, so that I don't have to move. Okay? The problem is, this separates you from your listeners. This makes the session feel very formal. Pag graduation lang may podium, di ba? Or kapag may uh, hearing, so on na, di ba? Because it's a formal event. If, if the, let's, let's rephrase that. Hindi natin sinasabing maling mag-podium. But you have to understand the nature of the session or the nature of the, the forum kung saan ka magsasalita. If you can do away with this, please do away with it. Okay? It's also good if you have a mic na, na wireless, right? Kasi kung may wire, may wire to, Anong mangyayari? Yep, matraffic. O kaya madadapa ka. Or worse, at least speaking from experience because I teach in UP, our mics don't work. <laughs> our wired 
mics don't work. You have to find a technique to roll the cord. I'm sure you've done that at one point in your life. You roll the cord, hold it in such a way like this forever, para marinig kayo forever. But a lapel mic, lapel mic is the best. Kasi nagagalaw mo pareho mong kamay. Diba? At nakakalakad ka. Another um, tip, we're not saying na mali lahat tong mga to, but uh, if we want to come up with a, a conducive or enabling environment for presentation, the projection screen, it would be better kung siya ay nasa taas, kung nakafix siya sa ceiling. Because the problem is kapag eye level siya, I can't walk to this side because kita nyo na tatakpang ko siya. And it's never appealing to uh, the listeners kapag may shadow dito. And if you need to point to, the, to something here, use a laser pointer, but never do this. Okay, guys, move away from the podium because, again, nakikita yung kamay nyo. Or you can use your cursor if you want. Um, so some basic tips. It would be better if you interact with your uh, listeners. Second tip. If you can, and if your computer allows it, use a remote control device. Bakit? If I didn't have this, I'd be constantly uh, moving to my computer. Pindot ako ng pindot. Or kung boss ako, kung boss, ano sinasabi ng boss? Next slide, please. <laughs> diba? Next slide, please. Um, so it would be good to invest in something like this. In endorse ni Sir Jabez ang CDR King, endorse ko na rin. CDR King has a very cheap remote control device. Infrared ang gamit niya. So, line of sight siya. You just have to make sure. USB siya. Kakabit mo yung receiver. And then yung remote control. Just make sure na nakikita nung remote control. Abot nung remote control yung ilaw. Okay? So, okay yun. Uh, that's a cheap way to do it. Uh, but Macs have uh, built-in infrared. You just have to get the remote control. Luma to. This is the nicer one. Okay? So the remote control device allows you to move around and you don't have to be tied to your tethers in your uh, computer. Number three, remember the B key. Any idea what the B key does? When you present, sino ang star? Who's the star of the show when you present? Kayo, di ba? Hindi si PowerPoint. Don't make this the star of your show. You know if this is the star of the show, if you see your listeners, your viewers, looking here, not looking here. If they're looking here, use the B key because it stands for black. Try nyo po yun. When you load a presentation, click B. Dapat naka slideshow view siya, ha? This directs your audience's attention from here to here. Okay? If you feel like B, black, is so dark and heavy, try W. White. Okay, so same, same principle. Okay? But B is actually okay because parang wala lang naka-project. Diba? Pag white kasi, uh, may nakikita hang, um, outline. Okay? So remember the B key. And lastly, most importantly, and this is, uh, I, I, I reserve this for last. Because there's this um, common practice. Pag may nagpe-present na, may, may isang magsasabi, pakipatay ng ilaw. And why is, why is that? Bakit pinapatay ang ilaw? Yeah, para mas makita ang presentation. Nakalimutan siguro natin, ang inattenda natin ay presentation. Hindi tayo manonood ng sine. <laughs> Hindi tayo manonood ng She's Dating a Gangster. Uh, Nakailangan pa tayang ilaw para makita yung presentation. Okay? So, keep the lights on. Unfortunately, not all the... I, I'm talking from the experience sa UP, ha? Ang UP kasi hindi dinasign ang buildings with a presentation in mind. Luma rin naman ang mga buildings sa UP. So, we're adapting to the times. So, ideally, dapat may ilaw dito. Uh, rather, the, the, present, the, the screen should be behind me, actually. Behind sa akin. Tapos may lights din doon. And there should be a set of light or a switch na yung ilaw lang na yun ang mamamatay. Unfortunately, ang mga rooms natin, dalawang switches. Harap at likod. Diba? So pag pinatay yung harap, hindi niya ako kita. 
Okay? Hindi kayo kita. Eh, ang gaganda nyo at ang gagwapo nyo. So, kailangan sa inyo nakatingin ng audience, hindi sa inyong presentation. Okay? So, just to recap, planning, you have to think about the message that you want to communicate. Uh, if it's a paper, you have to think about what your audience can benefit the most from your, uh, from your work. Okay? One idea per slide. You have to design your slideshow, not just prepare your slideshow. Think about the arrangement, think about the uh, visual elements, think about the movement. And when you deliver, you have to make sure that you present like you mean it. Hindi lang yung basta makapag-deliver na mairaos lang yung presentation, okay na. Okay, so we won't. Uh, I didn't really focus on public speaking. That's a different uh, genre in terms of uh, discussing things. So everything is here. Thanks for your attention.